stability never felt better. The first five miles, you're just getting warmed up. From downtown to uptown, you'll take the scenic route. Tired legs? You'll feel fresh. From first steps to final strides. Steep hills, super steep hills, long runs, even longer runs. Whatever comes, you can run through it. With stability, cushioning, and more comfort than ever, in every step. Because nothing feels better than the adaptive stability and premium comfort of the Gel Keano 30 shoe. All right. Day one of the World Athletics Championships in Budapest. Chris Chavez and Kyle Merber here for the official Sidious Mag post race show. We're going to change up the format a little bit this time around. Last year, the last two years, we've done instant analysis after each session, each day of the Olympics, the World Championships. We hustle back to our place and then just immediately just start geeking out, nerding out over everything that took place. And this time around, I guess Kyle and I are going to lead the show, and then we're going to bring on our analysts to unpack the distance events, the field events, the sprint events, and... Boy, we have so much to talk about. We have so much to talk about. We messed up the trams again. This time it was not our fault. Yeah, so we've been getting lost in Budapest. <laughs> now we're two for two on like not being able to figure out how to get back to our hotel. We were sprinting from where the tram got us to back to the hotel, and we saw our friends from ASICS who are powering this whole operation. Our You'll coverage. see us rocking ASICS you know, all throughout the stadium. I've been going for a morning run in them, Media 800. You're going to be kitted out in yep. A6. So the, the, but we saw our friends from A6. They saw us sprinting back to the hotel, and they're like, your day is just starting. You guys got work to do. So oh, yeah. uh, they, they understand the hustle. Yeah. So overall, I guess, let's talk about the atmosphere first. Yeah. This stadium, fantastic, <sighs> absolutely rocking. The performances on the track are, you know, faster for – First rounds, I thought, every, you know, with the rule changes and all this stuff, people kind of expected so, uh, athletes to be taking it easy and slower. And no, uh, the track surface is now a buzz a bit because it's the same track surface as the Tokyo Olympics, and we saw how fast that was. But, uh, I mean, most electric atmosphere at a track meet that I've ever been to. And th the weather is so cooperative. You mm -hmm. know, we did have a, a little delay this uh -huh. morning for an hour but then since then, it's been beautiful. Walking to the stadium for the PM session, I said to Mac, I said, shut your eyes for one second. Just put your hand out and imagine you're warming up for 1,500 right now. It was a dream scenario out there. And the Times obviously reflected that. It was, it's beautiful, the stadium, the atmosphere around it. I, I had a beer in the stadium because I was just like, let's just enjoy when the in track Budapest. and field. When yeah. in Budapest. <laughs> Um, I had a cold chicken sandwich. I don't know why. I, I was looking around for a microwave. I understand that's like the second meal I've been given that's been room temperature slash thawed. Okay. Uh, but anyway, it's it was really, really enjoyable. Crowd was going wild. Mm -hmm. And I cannot believe we have eight more days of it. But first one was electric. Great first start. First one was electric. All right. So do you, let's get into unpacking all of the action so to start off we're going to bring on our distance analyst since we're in europe yeah our european correspondent has joined us david everyone McCarthy. in the studio clap it up for <laughs> mr david mccarthy <laughs> <laughs> all right david so let's start off with the women's 10k this is the first track gold medal that was awarded uh it was a jog fest at the very beginning as most you know, championship races go out to be, but then, you know, slowly but, sur sh slowly but surely it starts to pick up and pick up, and then just the last 800 is electric. But this one didn't come without some dramatics. With less than 10 meters to go, Sifan Hassan in the lead at this point, the first of her th triple attempt, and she just goes down. And Gudaf's a guy who is right on her heels, capitalizes upon the moment, not only wins the gold medal, but leads an Ethiopian sweep of the medals. And, you know, Savannah Hassan took her time getting back up and walked across the finish line. That was the moment in the stadium where sort of like everyone was going crazy because on the backstretch, they're running five wide. Then with 
50 meters to uh, 10 meters to go. Stefan Hassan falls and the stadium is quiet. So, David, so talk, from the beginning, we yeah. jogged. Like, so, like well, is that good? Like, are we happy that we're out there jogging the first yeah, lap? Yeah, it, it was it was a slow enough uh, starting off race. They went through the first mile in 5.36. So that was you're doing mile repeats yeah, in that so, pace so, today. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so 3.30 Ks, and then it slowly, but they got down to kind of 3.10 pace, and then towards the back end, they were down at three-minute pace. Um, Safan Hassan and Gide were out the back from the start, and then it really, it, it, it didn't even get going with two laps to go. It was literally 300 to go, and 300 to go, S- Safan Hassan just letters it, like goes wide and just starts pumping. But in that case, like, you know, you're full of beans, you're full of energy, but still at the same time too. And you've been sitting for 25 laps, right? Like, so you're, you're kind of anxious and you want to go and you're feeling, you're feeling good, but probably just went way too hard. And like, you know, unfortunately just ran the legs out of herself. And you could see her, you could see she was coming under pressure, coming up the home straight because she was going wide. Like, like, you know. Weaving. Yeah, weaving. Weaving. Pushing out, pushing out, pushing out until like, you know, she came under so much pressure. And at that point, like in your mind, you're like, I want the win, I want the win, I want the win. And like, you know, I was saying to you when we were coming home, like you can, I can, I've blown up in races disastrous. So many times. You know, (laughs) and no, but like, and like you're, you're kind of, you're pushing for the lead and you want it so badly. And you know, for 250 meters, she thought she had this. And then next thing it's slipping away, but she can feel herself tying up. And instead of like accepting that you're going to get past, you know, you just keep pushing till you can't go a stride further until you run the legs off her and then bam, she hits the ground. And like it just went from like a very pedestrian, non-exciting race to just the most electric last 300. But yeah, what will be interesting now is like, the you know picking yourself up after that there that's like that's traumatic like that's a traumatic experience she's got to come back out now tomorrow and has the women's 1500 uh, semi-finals so that'll really show i suppose the caliber athlete she is and like if you're going to take on the triple like you you, you know you got to be able to show that you have the mental fortitude to come back from that so time will tell now so throughout the whole race at the very beginning it's very staple signature Stefan. Hassan esque jogging jogging at the yeah. very back even letting a little gap form but it's like if you're a Stefan Hassan stan like you're n- you never hit the stan. yeah you never <laughs> <laughs> push the panic button and so uh, over the you know the the foot on the gas starts to accelerate things can you guys explain to me exactly what was Stefan Hassan trying to do on that final lap i mean sh- she was pressing from from the front and Gudaf Sagai is someone that you can't yeah. really run the legs out of. Here's, a, here's the thing that I think sort of happened is in most races that are normal paced, it winds up and you get an idea of like how you're allocating energy. And what I think probably happened with her is she hit the bell lap and she has so much energy. She's like at this point, she hasn't even had an idea to gauge how she's feeling because it's so it's been so, so easy. And I think she went from zero to 60. She just unleashed all at once yeah. instead of winding it up a little bit and feeling it out, seeing how the rest of the race is feeling. You didn't have to win it 300 meters. Oh, yeah. And I think she tried to. And it was just, it was too hard. It was a tactical error. Yeah. You know, definitely, because that I, I think that was definitely it. Just full of energy um, and just thought, like, I'm just going to run away from everyone. But at the same time, too, like, it's not as if the others aren't as, as good a qu- quality athletes, you know. So, yeah, unfortunately, uh, that is just not the place you want to be doing it. And just in front of the world scene, it's, uh, it's demoralizing. The crowd went... Like a crazy audible gas oh yell, yeah. I mean and it then it was silent. It was so entertaining. It was, like, you know. and then yeah. I mean, I was looking around, and it, you know, we're in Europe. We've got a Dutch athlete on the track. The Hungarian fans sidebar are unbelievably yeah. mm-hmm. enthusiastic. Every time a Hungarian fan, or you know, a, a neighboring Hungarian hun- adjacent, yeah. yeah, like, and there's a lot of countries right around us. Yeah. <laughs> Then the, the, the fans are so into it, and I do think that everyone was really, really behind Safan. And, I mean, like, I, I, I wasn't rooting for anyone. I just root for entertainment in this case with a, a fun last lap. I was super entertained. Obviously feel bad for Safan, not the way you want to yeah. lose a race. But, like, from my perspective, I was like, that was the most exciting six seconds possible in sports yeah and then i suppose then also then just looking at we'll say get in at like you know reigning reigning world champion world record holder um she's only raced once this outdoor season uh the paris mm. diamond mm-hmm. league so um i don't know you know I, t- I, t- I do think like when it comes to championship racing 
Um, there's a difference between time trialing. You can do that off a lot of fitness, but I think that type of winding um, requires some more race practice than maybe what she did. And I, d I just don't think she showed much of a presence in the race. So in addition to the Ethiopian sweep, so it was Gudaf Sagai, Latessa Bedgide, and then El Gaju uh, Tay right behind them. Irene Kimaos was the top Kenyan in fourth. Alicia Monson, fifth place. There we go. Team USA. I mean, for her, it was a pair of 13th place finishes at the Tokyo Olympics and then at the uh, World Championships last year. I looked over at you, you know, with a lap, uh, with 800 meters to go, and I was like, Alicia's still in it. I think there's still a little bit more speed to unlock in order to close the gap on the East Africans, but overall, really solid showing. I don't think this was the way Alicia like runs her absolute best race, the slow 530 something mile for a start. Like I think she really excels if we're hammering from the get go, right? Like we want that monsoon energy from step one. And but even still like completely able to hold her own fifth place, really, really good. Uh, you know, big win for her, highest finish obviously for her at a world championships or Olympics. Uh other Americans not uh, Amazing showing, unfortunately, right? Like, Natasha was the one who was up front jogging at the beginning, leading the charge, ultimately finished in 14th place. Mm -hmm. Elise was, was 12th. 12th. You know, I don't think either of them are going to be thrilled with that performance. The good news is you immediately come back for the 5K. How much does a race like this take out of, you know, their legs? Well, it was, it, it was slow at the start, so it, it depends. Like, you know, sometimes it can be, like, like then a race like that, there is mental energy when you're sitting in there wondering how things are going to go, um, a burn up like that too. Um, I thought like, you know, for Alicia, I thought that was actually like, I was delighted not to see her go to the front and not panic. Yep. And like with, a, with the, a bell lap to go, she was in that pack going wide. Um, you know, we saw her run the 3K at the Bislett Games and she was with them up until the final lap and then they just, you know, left her for dead and she was talking there like it's just about bridging the gap between that and Worlds and she did that. I don't think she could have ran a better race. Like, I think she should be hugely proud of herself and even more so the way the race was ran because, as you were saying, like, that's not typically her style of running. So I think that gives her major confidence, um, you know, heading into next year in, into World Champ uh, into Olympics. So before we move to the next one, if I'm Faith Kipiega and I'm watching that, I feel pretty good about my 5K. I'm just saying. I didn't see anything today no. that would have me worried. Gidei was, you know, a couple seconds behind her when she set the world record earlier this season. Gidei didn't even win this. Stefan, I mean, didn't no. stay on her feet at the most important part of the race. Like, for me, if I'm Faith, I think I got the double. I don't think uh, uh, Stefan has showed anything major this year. I think her best performance was London Marathon when you look at the way she stopped and stretched and came back and won it. Um, <laughs> you know, but like, you know. We needed more distance today so she could have got up. Yeah. He's on a little stretch. I don't know if they saw it on the broadcast, but she grabbed uh, a, it was a big sponge at yeah, one point yeah. and like yeah. cooled herself off. It's not, it's not that hot. It's there. warm for 10K, yeah, yeah. but it, it's, Just keeping her it's not up. Doha. But she just hasn't showed anything to suggest that she would she was better than everyone else, and I think we saw that again. I don't know. Look, you know, she she looked really powerful when she kicked and she ran the legs out of herself. You know, she came up a bit shy. Could it have been a bit better if she kind of wound it up a bit more? You know, we don't know. But so I, I saw a little bit on Twitter. I mean, we rushed back here and and haven't been able to watch some of the post race interviews. We still have Caitlin Hutchison out in the mix zone right now you know, kind of getting a couple more for us, but there's a little buzz about, like, Gide, I, I mean, uh, Gudaf Sagai potentially impeding and, like, throwing an elbow or something like that, no. but it looked clean to me. Well, so she was, you could see clearly she knew she was, she went from lane one to, out to outside of lane three. She she was going out to fan, so she knew she was tiring, and she knew uh, the, the open girl was coming around on her, so, like, she knew... She was she was doubting herself then, so she was trying to block her off. So uh, you know, I think that's spoof. What I'm trying to think of like what the sports equivalent to like another sport of falling a race you're about to win with five meters to go, which is now obviously the theme of day one. It's like you just got to catch this pop fly to win the World <laughs> Series, or and it reminds. Do you remember as a Yankee fan, you might remember Luis Castillo. It was like the Mets had, I don't know. It was like perfect game or something like that against or no hitter against the Yankees and Luis Castillo just dropped like the fly, a very easy <laughs> yeah, pop up at the very end and like that's the equivalent of that's that. the equivalent um, all right let's move on to the uh, 1500s so 
Today was the first round of the – actually, let's let's touch on the steeplechase. Yeah, steeple. First. I mean, I think looking at the steeple coming in, it's La Mechagurma versus El Bacali, right? Yeah. Like, that, that is the theme. I got a, a little fired up this week when I saw the, the betting odds because I feel like – Lamecha Gurma, in my mind, is the favorite. They're seven and one versus each other lifetime mm-hmm. in favor of El Bacali, you know, Olympic champion, world champion. Lamecha Gurma's had the better season, like straight up from, you know, yeah. indoor world record in the 3000, beat him in Doha, like handedly in a flat 3K, ran 329, ran the world record in the steeplechase, and yet he's got like plus 200 odds. To me, it doesn't make any sense. So if you're in the States and you're in one of those, uh, you know, areas that DraftKings has odds for the men's 3,000 meters. Look into, you know, yeah. uh, what, uh, you know, Lamecha Gurma's odds are because there might be some 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 money there. Um, Today didn't change my mind on anything, though, in the steeple. It kind of... No, yeah, it's it's between Gurma and Al- Albacali. I think uh, who I was uh, been following a lot this summer is George Beamish. Um, you know, and definitely at the start of the season, uh, George felt he felt kind of puzzled about the event and, and didn't know... Um, I think I definitely s- see saw a more confident and relaxed uh, athlete out there today. And I mean, in his post race interview, he said like he thought they were on eight thirty pace and he runs eight sixteen. So yeah. he's pretty much on eight, uh, you know, on PB shape. So I think you know his race in Monaco, um, you know, gave him a lot of confidence. I think this race today will give him a lot of confidence. I'd love to see him, you know, just get under that eight ten mark. Um, and I think that would you know give him a lot of confidence going into um, next year's uh, Olympic cycle. You're just saying that because they said nice things about you on Coffee yeah, of course, Club. Yeah, yeah. Of course. <laughs> one for one, one for one, right? The, uh, the question wait. I have is, like, how fast can uh, – we know George is, like, a crazy last 100, 200 meters. And it's like, well, what can you do over a water jump and a final barrier? Mm-hmm. Can, it, like, can you carry that momentum at the same speed? Because I, th- I do think that that bronze medal is pretty wide open. And yeah. now – can we talk about the fact that <laughs> El Bacali didn't even win <laughs> his <laughs> heat? Now Kenneth Brooks is the favorite. Kenneth Brooks <laughs> might be the favorite. <laughs> He's just Ken. Uh, so he yeah was going pretty aggressively in that final, what, last lap, I think it was? He was aggressive was the whole race. He ran also a lot in lean, too. Because we saw him at USA with his historic falls. Yeah. That got picked up by when when you do something that is getting picked up by media sources outside of Sidious Mag and like You're other doing track well. outlets, like something must have happened. It was on John Boy. It was on Sports Center. Yeah. It was yeah. So for him to fall, get up, you know, still do what he did at USA's, now running a clean race. But he said his coach was like, "What if we just run in lane two? Make sure." <laughs> and it it worked. But he, I love how like nonchalant. He is kind of walking through the mix zone after. And just, like, the way he carries himself out there, that confidence. Like, for a college kid who's never been at Worlds before to just immediately show up and be like, ah, I'm going to, like, kind of get in before El Bacali. <laughs> this guy I've been watching on TV for years. What do you think, if you're El Bacali, like, what, what do you, you just brush yourself off? Like, ah, yeah, he does not care. He, does he not doesn't care. know his name. I just wonder what way the final is going to be around because the two boys are no, <coughs> they're going to be the two to watch. They're equally as fit as each other, really, so I don't think one is running away from the other. Um, I do think Al Bacali has the, that championship experience of that last lap. He, looked, he, he always looks really good. Um, I'm just interested to see, like, what way the final will go and how it will go between the two of them. Um, will somebody else try to take it out? Um, you know, I think Al is happy to sit back at times. Um, whether Garma feels as relaxed about it, um, I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see how it, how it, how it, how the race shapes out, like tactically. I'm wondering if someone else in the race want because I can see two worlds in which it's really slow or really fast, and I can see some, you know. Team tactics, maybe from the Ethiopians, out, getting getting going, yeah. saying, "Hey, our, our guy ran seven fifty two. Like, we we know that we benefit from a fast race here." Uh, I'm looking at it now, just like who else can employ team tactics? U.S. only got one. Oh no, no two. Isaac had yeah. initially got tripped up in yeah, the final, uh, coming off the final water barrier. He was mm-hmm. in position to qualify. He he got tripped up, went down. Didn't initially qualify. He came through the mix zone. This is very funny. And he's like, he, he said to me, he said, do you have Haas's number, his agent? I was like, yeah. So I was like, all right. So he called his agent from my phone, picked up. He's like, all right, I'll meet you at the protest. Walked over, got in. Wow. Look at that. Without that phone. So what I'm saying is <laughs> I've, I've done my duty for America. That was probably roaming charges. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Look at you. We just put it on the Sidious Man card. Yeah, but uh, you know, not a great day for Bernard Keeter, unfortunately. He's disappointed mm-hmm. after, but two in for the U.S. Two in for Japan. I'm just kind of looking like this is going to be a good, r- good race. But up in the front, like I definitely see Gurma Elbakali. Who else is going to run that far under eight? I mean, maybe Leonard Bet. He's yeah. been slept on a little bit, but uh, yeah, men steeplechase. The final is scheduled for. August twenty second. So that is I don't three know what days day or now. time. Yeah. or I need where, I, we, where we are. All right, let's move to the men's fifteen hundred first round. Uh, no, wait. Uh, yeah, both we had both the men's and women's yeah. fifteen hundred first round. Uh, the morning session we had uh, the women. So let's start there. What stood out to you from the first round of the fifteen hundred? How fast they went. Jeez. I mean, Cinta Visa ran. 401 for he personal leaves. best and did not make it. Mm. And it just, it, I think that there was this big idea of if we get rid of the little cues, what incentive is there to start running fast? Mm-hmm. Like, what's the point? And the women immediately came out and every single race was honest from the gun. Lots of, lots of 401s, 402s across the board. Um, I, I've, I've been a proponent of it the whole time. I feel really good about taking such a strong stance on that the last few years that we should get rid of the little cues because it worked out great. Every race was super exciting, very digestible as a, from a fan's perspective. We're not like flipping back and forth, checking on our phone with decimal places or from like the previous heat. So that's my first thing is that they ran really, really fast across the board. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, if you take uh, fake Kipi Egan out of it as well, I think it's fairly open. Um, so I'm looking forward to just yeah seeing seeing how it pans out. I'm looking forward to seeing like I suppose, I suppose she's just gonna get after it again and just scare people off and you know. But that's that's the final. We still have the semis to go through tomorrow. Um, it'll be interesting to see will they run as fast again? Like you know, uh, I d- you know it was four minutes, four o two, four o three, four o one. They were all running today. People running PBs, not getting in. Um, the standard is is deep. Um, you know. Besides fate, you know, who are the clear favorites? I think there's many people there running really well. So it's a hard one to call, which is great from a spectator point of view. Yeah, it's it's like because of how the all, you know, three or four races shook out, like someone like Laura Muir is flying under the radar a little bit when you look at kind of like everyone's t- times from the day. Sinclair looked really good. Really good, yeah. Just I sat in the pocket, yeah. stayed quiet. Kira McGean looked really chilled and relaxed. Um, you know, not just saying that. <laughs> you know, it's it's like we 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 prop yeah. up an American. Yeah, He's like yeah. I prop up an Irish. Yeah, I really think Kira looked really good. Um, I think uh, Jess Hall. Um, you know, there's yeah, there's there's a lot of people there looking looking good. Um, and uh, yeah, just exciting. We've seen it uh, again. Now interesting to see how uh, Hassan comes back out tomorrow. Yeah. So Americans get all three. Safan ran and closed in fifty nine. With the fall. No, th- in the 1500. Oh, okay. She didn't have to do that. Like, uh, uh, th- knowing that you have to 10K in a few hours, I don't know. I'm just thinking retrospect, like going to bed tonight, are you thinking maybe I should have just finished in sixth place <laughs> and not tried as hard? But uh, anyway, US, three in. Sinclair, Nikki, Corey, all good. Australia, three in. Look at that. US. Abby Caldwell, uh, Jess Hall, mm-hmm. and Lyndon, mm-hmm. all in. So, uh, yeah. Some good battles. Did Kenya get everyone in? I'm just going to assume, yeah. Is, like, with the 1500s, like, are we expecting them to go, e- yeah, we are expecting them to go even yeah, faster in the three. second, in the semifinal, right? I think so. I mean, now, I, I every single race in these 1500s, and this is just the depth and the elevation of what used to be a good time versus, you know, what's a good time now. But you do look at, it's like, Oh, who's in this heat? Holy shit. <laughs> like, who's in this next one? And every single one is so stacked. Yeah. And now it's like, all right, well, if you split that down <laughs> and condense it into two heats, it gets even more ridiculous. And just from uh, the standpoint of having room to run and open up on the track, because we did see this in a lot of heats in which there there's so many athletes bunched together with 100 meters to go that – there, there are 1,500 runners who probably crossed the finish line and had gears left that they were never able to use just because it's so crowded. All right. So of this one, I mean, like, do you think – it's so interesting because in both races, the men's and the women's one, there's just, like, a very clear-cut favorite for gold. In the women's one, I feel like 
everyone's kind of in agreement, like, all right, it's a battle for silver. Are you rooting for Faith? Yeah, my friend Faith, who I went and visited in Kenya. She didn't give you an interview today. <laughs> she was all business. <laughs> she was focused. She was getting from place. She stopped for the Kenyan media, the written press, which they don't take videos on that side of things. That's the one, I guess, for the people who might be watching or listening to this, just to kind of understand, like, the dynamics of what happens. Yeah. It's like, so the athletes come off the track, then they have to do, like, a, a whole round through people who are – uh, the TV interviews, they paid a lot of money to have rights to be in those spots. And then after that, they go down a flight of stairs and then do interviews with people who p- didn't pay as much to be, uh, but can still do TV interviews, but just against a really nice backdrop. Then after that, they walk through this maze. So what you're saying is you're not taking it personal. I'm not taking <laughs> it personally whatsoever, but then you have to do the newspaper and the magazine and online writers. And then Chris Chavez. And then you come through and then you do uh, the internet press. That's us. And we're the last people. So by then, like, athletes are very tired, and so that's why we appreciate when, like, they really do bring the energy and, you know, take the time to stop for us. And, uh, you know, I think one of the fun things, too, is that like, I, I overheard one of the sprinters who, like, maybe didn't advance or anything like that, but he was just going walking through and he like turned to like one of the world athletics press people and was like, I don't think I'm going to make it. Like it is so far. Yeah. <laughs> they have the athletes being transported in carts. Uh, Did you see the like cart cam? There's yeah, yeah, there's cameras in the carts too and microphones. So like the warm up track is so far away from like the main track. And so in order, we're not, they're not going to make the athletes walk a mile to get to the starting line. So instead, they have golf carts that they put like six of them on, and then they drive them to the start. So it's kind of funny because like they have the cameras in front of them, and also like you're sitting next to like your biggest yeah, opponent, <laughs> <laughs> like really up close. And so Apparently, too, like the carts are very obvious who they think is going to make it. <laughs> like yeah, so they put all the heavy hitters <laughs> in one, and then they move on. It's kind of like, man, I hope this cart makes yeah. it there safely. Like that's everyone, really. <laughs> Um, all right, so y- you're rooting for Faith, or are you rooting for Jakob? Like, in general, like, we have two 1,500 athletes that are just heavy favorites. I don't know, like, it's kind of fun to see favorites get beat. So my thing is, if you're not going to run really fast, then I want you to lose. But that's the thing. It's like, I think, like, we saw this at World Championships last year with Faith. It's just like, from the gun, we knew who the medals were. Yeah. Uh, it was that, that was cool. Like, I want that. If it's, uh, if it's really fast, then I'm team Faith. If we're jogging, then let's, you know... See what happens. Yeah. So, all right, let's shift gears over to to the men's uh, first round. Jakob being a Briton does his thing. Does his thing. The Jakob Whisperer, mm. how do you unpack that race? Um, yeah, he just did He do, He did what he always does, just gets out there, uh, stays out of trouble at the start, never is too aggressive getting off the line, um, and just, yeah, came around then with 5.50 to go, took the lead. Uh, Josh Kerr looked really cool and under control. Josh thought. told everyone to slow down yeah. at one point. He was yeah, like, chill. Yeah, he's probably like, this is okay if he's going to the lead. We don't need to, like, you <laughs> know, get past him. He's going to wind it up, and we're all going to get through. 3.33, yeah. you know, we're running fast enough. We got yeah. a couple more rounds but here, But I thought boys. Josh looked really good. I think Josh is a championship runner. Uh, we always see that. He doesn't overrace during the year, so he's probably getting into his best shape later in the season. Um, I hope that's the same case. Um, I hope I hope I would love to see him challenge Jakob. Like I mean, Jakob is clearly the favorite. He has shown no sign of weakness, so there's no reason to doubt him. So you're just going to hope that somebody else comes along and has upped their game and has the race of their life. And we see an excitement. I want to, like I mean, like it would be unbelievable to see Jakob being beaten. You know, in 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 terms of like sport, right? But like, so you know, if somebody would you say the same thing about faith? Uh, yeah, anyone. Okay. Like, yeah, no, I Chris won't say it. Yeah, no, like, <laughs> in, like, I have no it's my friend. Yeah, in, in any of these races, um, there is no one, uh, you know, I want to win. I want to just see a good race. And I want to see if the best are the best. I want to see them being beaten on their best day, you know. Um, so, But I just think, you know, Jakob is absolutely tenacious in character, especially after losing to Jake last year. Um, he doesn't have a world 1500 meter title. No, you know, so like this is this is this is the one of the get in line, baby. Yeah, none of us yeah, do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But there was a lot of um, there was you know looking at the other heats there today. Um, we had uh, so that was Jakob. There was one. The slow second was slow. slow. Yeah, that was which uh, that this is a kind of the point of why we were saying it's like this is why you go fast, even with it just being big cues only. Chariot was sixth. Yeah. He was sweat like afterwards he's just wiping off the sweat <laughs> off his face because he 
it, the blink of an eye, he would have lost that. That that was a, a great example of the Heat, in which there were so many guys on top of one another that it was just it was you know were you in the right position Who won there? That second Heat, there that was Mario, Mario Garcia. Oh yeah, yeah, so Mario, uh, we saw he hit the bell in last place. And then ends up winning the closing in a 51 second last lap. 51 0? Yeah, 51 04. Yeah. So Whew. This is not 51 9 we're talking no, about. No. So that's, so I'm sure that gives him a lot of confidence. Uh, Neil Gorley looked really smooth as well. Um, so yeah, those guys. Um, you Sam know, Tanner. Yeah, it's it, Tanner. Like those guys in a slow race, the top guys came through. So that's impressive, I think, always when the, when the best guys can still win in the slowest races. Um, he's three. Was that Katir? No, so Katir got beat yeah, by the 18-year-old Niels Laros, yeah. who has been so impressive so he this did season. double last week. Um, was it in Jerusalem, I think it was, the yep. European under-20s? Mm -hmm. He won the 15, and he won the 5K. He closed the 15 in, I know it was a 3.56 race, but he ran 51 seconds. He's got a 144.800, he's got a 13.23 5K, and he's got a 3.32 1500 and that kid looked like a seasoned veteran the way he ran today so unbelievable confidence um nordis was in the race uh, we were talking about him earlier today will he be the upset um you're changing your tune a I little bit you know he did well and i think you know he looked like he looked a little bit uh, just a bit more he's not gonna see this come on let yeah, your no, feelings out just, you know he looked like he was <laughs> looking around he didn't look maybe in the same race you had nagoose there and he was just absolutely chilling um, Nordis, I think, um, probably is faster at the end of a faster pace. Um, still very impressive today, considering, um, but, um, you know, not, a, not standing out. Cole Hawker was in that. He, yeah. yeah he, I uh, really well. he was, he was kind of hanging back a little bit. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, they, then they broke away and then they had six. And at the beginning it was like, they broke away. He was the man in six. He ended up finishing in third. Mm -hmm. And I just wonder... Like he ran three thirty four, looked good. Didn't when I told have one more he crazy did. year. He confirmed. I asked him. Everyone that. would say yes. Though, He's like well, no, no. But he he said he was like, yeah. I mean, like I felt good. And I told him it was like, yeah. I mean, did it feel like a three thirty four? He's like, oh, that's what we ran. And I was like, he's like, no, it, it felt easy. Yeah. So I, I and kind of like it's really funny that these athletes. Oh, here Mac has a clip to queue up. Oh, all right. Let's. let's so I guess uh, after Portland Track Festival, like, you kind of spoke about like how you feel like you have mental potential and the ability to the belief that you can win this thing. Is that still holding true today? Definitely. Um, yeah, I don't know why the mind, mind mindset would change um, at this point. Um, if I don't if I don't put myself in the race to win it and get a medal, then you know that's that's why I come here. That's where I see my career going, and I'm always gonna hope for that. And not to discredit the field, it's one of the strongest 1500 years um, that I can remember in recent history, so um, definitely easier said than done, but of course that's the goal still. So while a lot of people might be really excited about like Yard Nagoose being like America's best hope at like a medal, I'm not discounting Cole Hawker. I mean, you'd be dumb to do so. He was sixth at the Olympics. He hasn't shown his cards against Discounting Jakob. for what? I like the way Cole talks about potentially winning. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I look, I like Cole, and I think it, like if you're talking about next year, he was he ran three thirty two in London and finished fourteenth. That race, I don't think you could really he, he like got tripped up or something like that. I don't know. I, I just think, uh, I, I'm not saying he can't have a great race, make the final this, but like I just think. If someone's beating Jakob, it's not someone who came in 14th last month in any race. I think you can talk all you want, and I like to see people are um, confident. But you know, we you know at this we just it'll it'll, ha it'll have to be seen. It's you know? such a different tune than my conversation with Adele Michal, my twin. Uh, he, <laughs> I said we were talking about it, and like the first time he mentioned, he was like, "Yeah, I just need Jakob to have a bad day," and then I was like. So it seemed like he was just mentally con already conceding, like, the gold medal to Jakob. And it's like, I don't think you can put yourself in that place if you really want to be in that conversation. Because it's like, he has the confidence of beating, you know, uh, Katir and... And Mario. And Mario. The, I mean, the Spanish 1500 team is unbelievable. Th that but it's like 1500 champs was one of the best So why don't you I've think you seen. can win? It's like, sort of like, there, there just needs to be that mental breakthrough that I hope he finds between yeah, the well semifinal and the if final. If Jakob gets beaten, he's not getting beaten by the guy who thinks that way. <laughs> you know, you, know, you so. can't think that way. So that's why I think he's going to get beaten by the guy who yeah. believes in himself and is American. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Because then on the other side <laughs> well, of things, well, you have you have Yard Nagus, 
<laughs> said the craziest yeah. thing. We have that clip on uh, on our uh, Twitter that. Um, <laughs> so we'll give Mac a second to cue that one up. So set Yared the, set is the so scene for this. The, chill the chillest like, guy at the at, at the he world looked championships. Great. Looked yeah. great. Completely cruised it in. I, I, you wouldn't even know we were at the world championships. And uh, this is what he had to say afterwards when talking about you know like. What's a win here for you? Is it just a gold medal or what? But Max showed Are you comfortable running in that big of a pass? Yeah, yeah. I think um, as long as I'm not like boxing on lane one, which I usually try to avoid in general, um, and I have space to kind of move out and go, then I have no problems with giant crowds. If anything, I like more people because I think it's more energy and kind of drives you along. <laughs> Does it feel different taking on Yakov? In the clip, there, there may have been a second clip that was tweeted out uh, most re more recently than that one. Um, but so you asked him what it was going to make for a successful uh, world championships. And he said, <laughs> he was like, I want to be happy. I want to be happy. <laughs> like, so it's like, have fun. I w would rather finish fourth and have the time of my life than win and be miserable. <laughs> and, and so then you broke it down. How did you break that statement yeah, down? So he said, I'd rather run a fast time and come fourth than win and run a slow time. <laughs> it's like, just took me a while to understand that one. <laughs> um, but uh, so, so basically, like what I'd say back to him, right, so you would rather run a PB and come fourth than run a slow time and be world champion. I don't know if it's about being <laughs> fast or not. Yeah, it's about being it's fun. About like, did yeah, he have yeah, good yeah, breakfast yeah, yeah. that day? But you know what? Was I also think Yard could say a comment like that and, like, he could just say it. <laughs> yes. Do you know what I mean? Like, so Do you think he's... Uh, he might be playing yeah. mind and, games. And, and I, think, I think it's that type of attitude that allows him to be so relaxed and run free the whole time. I mean, when you look at that guy running, there isn't an ounce of tension in his body. He's just up on his hips running. He's gliding along. I think... Again, when we talk about beating Jakob, and I mean, first of all, if you're waiting for Jakob to have a bad day, okay, right, so maybe that happens sometime. It hasn't happened yet. It happened last it, summer. It happened last summer, you know, and probably wasn't his worst day, and it was, um, and, and Jake Whiteman was on complete fire. Like, you know, it was only Jake was able to, you know, beat him that day. Um, I think you have to... You, you you have to have, a, s uh, I feel, a certain sense of belief and, you know, you can do it um, and that you want it uh, because Jakob Ingebrigtsen is not giving that up, you know. So, um, but again, y Yard is a different character. He's a, like, he's, he's, it's so cool to watch a guy that, like, um, what you think doesn't care, although he does really care. And I love the fact that he's having fun. And I actually completely believe in that because I think a lot of people... Uh, lose their flow in racing from tension, nerves, and fear, and he doesn't have that. I think maybe, you know, he keeps that going, and with more experience in time, I think this guy is a world champion. This is the first time we saw Yard in a Team USA kit. You that was good. the first thing you said to him. It was like, uh, <laughs> Team USA kit looks good on you because you scratch from the Olympics. And then he just goes, yeah, I think I look good in red. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that confidence is there. The it's confidence is there. Up. It's just a little bit more tapered down than than some uh, some other people yeah. um all right so we'll unpack the semifinals of the uh men's 1500 when they take place a few days from now right no tomorrow tomorrow tomorrow, tomorrow okay yeah. we've the men and women semis tomorrow then you have one day off for the women and you've two days off for the men so the men have two days in between the semi and the final and the women just have one day uh, all right david so before we let you go what event are you looking forward to the most tomorrow uh Men's 10,000 meter final. Okay. Um, I'm looking for, I've become recently interested in the sprints, right? <laughs> you know, because <laughs> like, you know, because like, I had to do all these uh, sprint interviews this summer and I like, first of all, like, I mean, like, I don't want to be saying it, but like, sometimes I had to actually, like the names, I didn't know whether it was a man or a woman. So I had to go on to World Athletics, just, you know. You knew nothing about nothing sprinting. Nothing about sprints. So now I have more like, in my I'm like, Sydney McLaughlin yeah. Lebroni, you're like, is, oh, is that yeah. a Sydney as Fred. a guy? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, so um, like we were saying earlier, you know, Noel Isles has done all this talk. Fred Curley is the reigning champion and Marcel Jacobs, you know. Can he got he through. Can, can, can he make an upset like the Olympics? We'll wait and see. Wait, so is it the 10K or the... Uh, oh yeah, no, the 10k. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you just <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Without a doubt. Here's yeah. all of my yeah, excitement yeah. about the hundred. Yeah, I, I, you know, I love that you're just. Low. I love that you're just 
excited at both levels yeah. for, for both yeah. of them. No, I am, because I think it's like, w- you know, we go back to these Netflix series and we talk about the drive to survive, all of these. When you, you see the cameras ba- around. Yeah, exactly. everywhere. When you have the background story, when you know the individuals, um, it brings more interest. And I think that's what is needed in sport to kind of get into personalities, the characters out, the rivalries. Um, and I think we're seeing a lot more of that through what we're doing here in Sidious. <laughs> You know, these interviews, um, you know, seeing the rivalries, um, that's what people want to see because a lot of people are just watching athletes out racing and they don't have any background story. And like I said, that's what I'm getting now in the sprints and it's just making me so much more interested. And so the whole, so I'm not, I'm not as bored sitting in the stand anymore. <laughs> not yeah. as bored, still a little bored, yeah, not yeah, as yeah. All right, so uh, 10K, Cheptegai, Aragawe, or yeah. the field, who is your pick? Yeah, I sp- Chep, the guy, you know, uh, reigning uh, champion, right? He won last year, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. Um, Kiplimo is out, right? Out. Yeah. Um, Our guy, I beat him, beat Chep, the guy in a 5,000 this yeah. season. Yeah, and um, like I always love watching Joe Klecker run, you know, um, just hard man, hardcore. Uh, who else do we have? Woody. Woody, yes, yeah, yeah, Woody. Uh, you know, it depends, again, on what way the race goes. Like, you know, it's a, that, that, that's, I'd love to see, I'd love to see a good steady race. I'd love to see a good fast time that doesn't drop the whole field, but that just starts winding, winding. Um, that's more engaging the whole way, that we're not just sitting there for like kind of, you know, 15 laps waiting. Um, but yeah, I mean, we just have to wait and see. But I'm Very political to. politician answer. <laughs> Didn't say a single I name. Know. Well, Who's it, winning it, the race? Yeah, team? no, and, uh, the, the, the honest truth is like, can you ever call it? <laughs> Can you ever call Make it? Make a yeah. pick. Okay. They're not okay. listening. Okay. I'll go Chip Lee. Uh, Chip the guy. Sorry. Chip the guy. I was even going between Chip Lee. Chip the guy. Yeah. Okay. Chip the guy. Oh, uh, Aragawa is in the chat. and <laughs> <laughs> He says he hates you, yeah. David. All right. Let's get our sprint lad Thanks, out of here. Cheers, <laughs> All right. And now we're going to shift gears a bit and uh, have... Jasmine Todd on for a new segment that we're going to be doing to this, Jasmine's Field Events Report. So we're going to have you run down what happened in the field events today before we unpack the sprints. Oh, man. I mean, do you guys want to start with the final of men's shot or should we end I with it? I think so. I think let's yeah, start off with the, with the big bang. Literally. I mean, the earth literally shook here. a big bang. We talked about Ryan having the blood clots in his legs. He's been We a haven't talked about it on this show, but yeah. so, so for context, yeah. For context, if you guys have not been on social media at all, Ryan made an Instagram post making an announcement that he was injured. He's got two blood clots in his legs. Who knows how he's about to get back home with two blood clots in his legs. Oof. But <laughs> I mean traveling here must have been just like so scary. I mean did he even know before he got here? Or did I think he, he knew out? and then yeah. got cleared to fly. And he was like, and then it was the doctor left it up to him if he wanted to compete. And he was like, yeah. And he said Which, he was like, going to compete. respect to him. Honestly, like, that's some Captain America shit. <laughs> the men's shot put was the only event that had their prelim, I guess you would call it, their prelim and their finals in the same day. So this morning he went out one throw and done like the vet that he is. Wouldn't expect anything less. And then the man comes out and decides that, you know, he just wants to throw the championship record. He throws a 23-51. Second furthest throw? His second furthest throw. Ever. Ever. Crazy. Because he broke the world record back in in June at the LA Grand Prix. So, like, he's just been on fire. uh, Unlocked. The thing that I don't understand is why make the post? You know, <laughs> at that point, it's right before the race you're, or the, the competition. Uh, you're competing anyway. I could understand You just keep that close to the why. chest. So I could see, you know, two reasons why. why. Like, you want, you want to keep everyone looped and being honest about things. It's not an – I don't view it as an excuse. But then, two, he's very confident in himself that he thinks he can win this thing with two blood clots. This makes for an amazing – Amazing story. Hey, that is fair. And it that is, I mean, that's that what win. NBC is eating up right now. Like these yeah. posts, and that's the, that's the headline you're going to be seeing. Like when mainstream media aggregates this story, it's the fact that Ryan Krauser broke a world championship record with two blood clots in his leg. That I stands out it. to any sports fan. 
Absolutely, because you sit there and you think about the hard work, the dedication that it takes. Like, the man, basically, he's coaching himself out here. He yeah. came up with his own technique. That's why he got cleared to compete. That's yeah. why yeah. Let me talk to my like, coach. Let me go talk to my coach real quick. He uh, looks at the mirror. And he's like, <laughs> you want like, to compete? Like to How I'm much going. money do I make if I win? <laughs> uh, yeah, my coach says we can play. And also, the instance of he's just that good that – he can go out there, oh. not 100%, and he's coming out with a medal. Honestly, it wouldn't – anything less than a gold is a shocker. It yeah. wasn't close at all. But then you had um, Leonardo Fabri. He threw a 2234, which was a PB for silver. Yeah. And then Joe Havix came out with a Kovacs, bronze. Yeah. Kovacs, Wow, why did I say Havix? <laughs> Is he Havoc. 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 Yeah. <laughs> but he threw a – 22-12, and I thought it was, it was a clutch. really exciting throws event. And, I mean, everybody was watching Ryan Krauser out there throwing. I have to give a huge shout-out to the Hungarian people that are here because they are putting yeah. on. They are loud. Yeah, so Joe especially got, like, a loud Green. reception. Oh, because he has family. Yes. That yeah. makes it's sense all of a sudden. I, it was, yeah, no, that makes more sense. I was like, I can't believe this crowd loves Joe You Kovacs. know what? The like, Hungarian yeah. ambassador I mean, nice came into the Team USA meeting, and he actually was like, Joe Kovacs, your last name's Hungarian. Are you Hungarian? And yeah. he was like, yeah. <laughs> Joe's got an amazing story. You'll read about him in our book someday. Yeah, nice. Um, can't wait for that book you know, to come along. It's going to be an audiobook soon. <laughs> <laughs> it was nice how boring the 10K was for like 23 laps because the shot put got so much attention. We were sitting in a really good spot, then, too. Yeah. Asics got us some we nice were. seats. Yeah. I love that spot. And I was going to say, that spot was a great place to watch all the events. I think the only event that I really had been moving for is to go be up close to the jumps because, you know, big jump girl. Yeah. And now that we're talking about jumps, why don't we just yeah, give us the rest of the field event quick report. Run down really quick. Um, so, you know, we had the men's triple jump. Let's get into Jaden Herbert because. Oh, Hibby. Man. My goodness. That man is on fire. There's nobody close to him. This is his event. It's his year, especially with Pedro's withdrawing from the meet because of his back injury. So that man went out there, jumped a 1770 meter jump. And on his first attempt, honestly, he probably could have done it. Um, I've heard the runway is fast. I'll get into that text once we get into the woman's long jump. But it looks like he kind of slowed down going into his first attempt. He jumped a 1699, which still put him up front in that first round. Um, and then we had two US men make it in Will Clay, Chris Bernard. Our, unfortunately, our U.S. champ did not make it into the final. And that's, that's all you got. We'll see them go again in two days. Is it, it's a clear slate now for the final. Clear slate. So why, why did Hibby? Hibby even do the second jump? Um, Practice. I think he really wanted to get that auto qualifier in. I kid you not, his first run up, he slowed down. It felt like he was trying to get his rhythm. That second jump, he came down that runway. He was right on the board. It felt, it looked like he just knew exactly what he was doing. That first one definitely seemed like it was more of a filler. Um, and also, I think Travis was just really going, let's get that auto qualifier in. Mm. Try to do a one and done. Didn't really get on the first one. Let's get one more in and get and that. Now right everyone's got to think about it. Now everyone's got to sit back and think about 1770. Yeah. Nobody was close to him. He, everyone else was jumping 1710. Oh my God. Range. That's disgusting. Like, 1710? What? I would never. It was only four guys that jumped <laughs> 17 meters. At They're that, flagging like, it as like not suitable for work, like yeah. when the clip just oh shows up on gosh. Twitter. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I love. Jaden Hibbert's energy. And, like, you could tell, like, he's so young and he's just soaking up the moment and he just, like, loves everything about being here. That I mean, he's going to go 18 meters. Yeah. So, I mean, like, I was going to ask you this sort of, like, for someone like him where he's so young, he's a kid. When he's a grown man, he's going to destroy the <laughs> record. I'm terrified. I would be scared if I was a male triple jumper because the man is raw talent. Yeah. Honestly, his form is not even that great. Like, oh, <laughs> that's, that's, he, clip that. Clip that. <laughs> his, his form 
is definitely going to get better as he gets older, I feel like. And especially under Travis. Travis knows what he's doing. He's such a baby in this sport. And so, one, he's going to get a little bit more mature. He's going to grow. He's probably going to get some more muscle on there and get faster coming down the runway. His form is going to get better. I think his first and second phase can improve. Hippie, we love you and like we want you on our on our daily show. So like I think your form is is fantastic. Does not no, jazz I mean, for us. But I, I mean that as a compliment. I saw the skip and the jump. But when I say it, I mean it as it's more of a compliment and yeah. not a diss to him. It's Step. definitely a compliment of the fact you're literally just a freak of nature. You're yeah. so talented and you have so much more room to give that I'm excited to watch you continue growing in the sport. So I do want him on because I got questions for him. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have you co-host with us when hopefully – I'm very optimistic, and he's, like, on the, one of the top of my list of, like, I want Jaden Hibbert on our show. Uh, so we're going to work on it. All right, let's move on into the All women's right. long jump. Let's get into the women's long jump, man. Um, it seemed like a struggle out there, to be honest, this morning. One, it should have been a struggle. It was raining, so they had the disadvantage of having a wet runway. Very wet runway. I was a little terrified. I was surprised they even jumped as soon as they did because a wet board and a wet runway is scary. Really? It's not something that you want to go on. Injuries can happen, especially if you plant wrong on that board. So I will give them that, but again, like I said, I've learned that this runway is fast. I text Tara um, on our way back from the stadium, and I asked her how the runway felt, and she responded with, okay, so first and foremost, it was wet, but the warm-up track runway was supposedly the same, and my God, it's amazing. So fast, I can feel the track grip my spikes and just launch me forward. So that all sounds good. We're, we're feeling good for Tara. Feeling real good for Tara. I think Tara might come home with a gold, and I'd love to see it. Um, honestly, Tara and then Martha Koala. I'm not sure how to say her first name, but I'm good. I hadn't heard it's of like her. It's like Martha, until, but with an E. Yeah. yeah, Martha with a little E at the end. A little special. Mix it up um, a little. <laughs> she was at the 2012 Olympics, but I hadn't really heard of her. She just started jumping super well, Uh 680 on I think August 2nd hmm. so recently just started jumping far those were the two people that took one jump one and done they looked like they're ready to go um Ivana who was no longer Ivana Spanovic um Valetta Valetta oh yeah yeah Change last name. I love when they do Let's this. Let's mix it up. <laughs> Let's mix it up. <laughs> little razzle dazzle. Um, her first jump, she scratched a little bit. It was very small foul, and then she came out, jumped, and she looks like she's in good form. So I'm excited to see her. Um, we've got Jasmine Moore going up too. She it took a while for her to get her rhythm. It seemed like so. I think Coach Peterson continued to have her jump. She went 670 her second round, and I think Coach Peterson was like, you know what? We just need to make sure you're getting the rhythms that you're prepped for tomorrow. I'm excited to watch these girls get out there and jump. I think we'll see some really far marks. And like I said, I need Tara to come back with a gold medal. And then real quick, what is our men's hammer and men's discus report? Men's hammer. We had a Canadian national record broken okay. by Ethan. It was a 81-18 meter throw. And then two of our U.S. athletes, Rudy Winkler and then Daniel Hugh, will also be going into that final and then on to the men's discus, we've got two U.S. men that made it into the final. Brian Williams, who got a season best of 63.85. And then Sam Mattis with a 63.43. Nice. Go USA. Go USA. Uh, all right, so let's move into the sprints. And now let's welcome back our mixed zone queen who sacrificed a little bit of more extra time to be there to get us more interviews. Caitlin Hutchison. Caitlin. Your makeup looks so good. Your first world championships internationally, day Whoa. one. Well, I'm cute, hey. This did not, <laughs> the performances on the track did not disappoint. Oh, my goodness. First of all, first of all well, I don't even know where to start. Chris, where are we starting? Because uh, I, I got something you, to say for days. I, I love that you just <laughs> want to jump into it. All right, so let's start with the... Uh, I mean the the relay. I mean we this uh -oh, this oh. just kind of. Oh my gosh! So this was I'm having the time. Crazy, 
because we 30 minutes before we saw Stefan Hassan <gasps> fall and now in the mixed 4 by 4 it was USA versus the Netherlands which was like the expected battle and they were on world record pace both teams oh i didn't know i just thought they was racing i, mean, I didn't know what was going on i mean when it, the both record teams are pace. that talented the world record was going to fall yeah. and when the event's been around for 2 years <laughs> the world record's <laughs> the world not that hard <laughs> <fall. Yeah. laughs> you so yeah. It was an epic battle, and with five meters, I would say even closer than Sifan Hassan. Yeah. Femke Bull face plants, basically, and hits the ground hard. Baton falls out of her hand. She get, manages to, like, get it pretty quickly, but the U.S. capitalizes upon the error, cross the finish line, world record. Congr- congratulations to them. First <laughs> off, like, that anchor leg, what was the split on the anchor? 48-8 for Miss Alexis Holmes. Alexis held it down. Look, she was, trend, she was trending on Twitter right lip. after that race. As she should, because first of all, because I was talking to, I don't know the man, and so if the man is watching this, I'm so sorry that I don't know your name, but I was talking to the man inside of the, uh, the press conference, and we was having this whole conversation. He was like, I had to double back and think about that for a second. Not only did she hold her own against Femka, but I mean... Even though she fell, like, you still beat her, like, at the end of the day. And so he was like, now that I think about it, like, a 48-second split makes the most sense because you can't keep up with the world record holder without running something sub-49. So I'm sitting here like, dang, like, Alexis, you really did your big one. So I don't know. That whole race was insane. Um, but You to, talked to Femke, too. I did talk to Femke. I, all I'm going to say, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Somebody got called the fire department. Cause when the 400 hurdles get on that track this week, Ooh. she gonna light it up. She said, I would like my revenge. Okay. <laughs> I mean, obviously she can't get it against Alexis, but I Can am. You, you're gonna sure you're that put Alexis in the 400 hurdles. <laughs> <laughs> Today. But I am pretty sure, cause I asked her, the reason why she said that is because I said, well, you know, you already got two world records from this year. So like, what do you think you're going to do in the 400 hurdles? She's like, I mean, I know I can like do something good, but Wait, like, can you do uh, an impression? You're good at impressions impre- of runners. And no, Femke has God. the softest voice. And so for her to like okay. say, no, I no, want to no. enact my revenge. It's like coming from like the cutest, highest bitch voice. Soft voice. Okay. Oh, we've got the clip. Let's. Oh, we're gonna play the, it. Oh, no reactions. All right, bet. <laughs> I'm not I'm sure. Not sure. Um, so that's the next thing I want to do. I want to get next, 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 next. I just put it in my side. I normally do, and I think I'm drunk when I felt someone next to me, and then I was on the ground. You got your money. Yeah, yeah, it happened. You've already got some more work in your life this year. So what do you feel like you're doing for the world? Well, well <laughs> I, feel I feel great. Like, like, I, like today, I did today, 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 like, there's a lot of people that are, like, on Twitter that are, like, oh, my God, our teammates must hate her. But there was a couple Who of other. That? I don't know. I'm, like, okay, stuff happens, okay? <laughs> but literally, there was interviews that she was doing earlier with her teammates, and her teammates were extremely supportive. They were just, like, I mean, it is what it is. So it happens. It, like, it happens, happens at the end of the day, and Alexis came out on top, as she should. So <laughs> I just, my favorite thing is that, you know, there are Matt Bowling fans out there. Yeah! But there are Matt Bowling haters out there. And, and now I, he's and a, now gold a gold medalist. medalist. And world, a world record. record. I got him to smile today, belt. guys. What would you do? I told him you should smile. And then he was like, hey, I'm just tired. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Matt Bowling 400 meter arc i love he still got eligibility though right i hope he has one more year he said he well in new york he said that he hadn't decided what he was gonna do uh, but i feel like after this you should just a world go record back bonus just, i mean but it depends on who's knocking at his door if you don't have too many people you might as well go take over the 400 next year so i mean they got nils now that's true so and matt bowling's very famous the, so. the, the, 
I guess the best part about the Matt Bowling story to get to this point is that, like, at USAs, you're just constantly going through. When you come through a mix zone, he was so much fun to talk to because you're just kind of like, yeah, I'm just having fun, and, like, this is all for fun. Like, I haven't trained for the 400 all year. And it's like, look at him now. Yeah. You're a world record holder. That's crazy. crazy. Um, <laughs> all right, so, you know, the, cra- the funniest part to all this is, like, a year ago, we were sitting in these chairs, and we're like, sell the f- mix four by we're four. Back. Oh, <laughs> get it out of there. And now, we're back. <laughs> I didn't know we were going to win. We're switching <laughs> teams. Like, we took we it seriously, and look what happened. I mean, it, it makes sense that they took it seriously, because one thing to, like, note is that all of them are collegiates, and Alexis literally just graduated. She's only been under Lanky for probably less than a year now, so you got a lot of youngins, and I feel like for them, they were like, well, if this is our time to shine, then we might as well take it. And yeah, I'm, I'm just to contrast that a little bit. It's not the best team that the U.S. could. So we, we're not. taking it mm-hmm. seriously. Like, obviously, those four athletes are taking it seriously. It's a great yeah. opportunity for younger athletes and kudos to them. in the relay pool to come mm-hmm. in, get a medal, let alone a world record gold one. But like, there's some really good people on the bench that the U.S. is not tapping into. Femka and Leaky Claver both coming back. Other teams and do it seriously. Like, that's taking it seriously. Absolutely. As mm-hmm. a country. But, exactly. you know, the U.S. has depth, and it's nice that we're able to have people step up. Must I think nice to be a 400 runner. God. I think to that same note, though, because, I mean, Gabby's Instagram post, like, she was supposed to be running it, and I think... Did she explain why what happened? Or um, no? they didn't really explain why. She just said it's championship season. Things happen. If people switch, then you kind of just roll with the punches. So no real word as to why. But um, I mean, I would guess for me, it's probably I think Ryan didn't really have the best leg um during the during the pre the prelims, and so I guess for them they were like, well, we don't absolutely. Gabby and I mean I guess in a game time decision when it comes to relays you end up taking out the slowest person unfortunately and then switching it for somebody else but it still ended up great for Matt and at the end of the day I think Ryan still does get a medal if you're in the prelim do you get a medal yeah. too yeah. So yeah I mean at the end of the day you was a part of the victory so. and he gets some of that bonus period wait so I've, I was wondering that like everyone the bonus who's is on a relay is it 100k relay. for everyone no they or split just it. you split it wait so, so if you're you in like, college you can still get it but then it also like depends depends but then if you switched one person in does that person also get a piece of the prize money yes so i'd be petitioning like no we're less people <laughs> like <Yeah. laughs> keep the same team that's one of the things that more they, money that's why there's usually so much drama within the relays is because they have they understand that with the prize money However many people are on that team is how many people are getting split mm. of that pot. Mm. Interesting. A lot of people probably didn't know that. Probably why they say you can only switch out one person. Because if you do eight different people, 100K eight ways, we will be fighting. And that's before taxes. <laughs> oh, well, also, Lord. I feel like that rule, that rule, I feel like, ha- is definitely more towards the U.S. because most other countries don't have four extra other people that they can put in a yeah, prelim we got and extra put people. in four other people for a final where the U.S. has so much depth in the 400 that they can put in as many people as they need. Uh, really quickly overlooked in your field events report, give us a quick rundown of what happened in the heptathlon day one. Oh, heptathlon. Let's, I mean, <laughs> the U.S. women are killing the game. I yeah. will say that. They're doing great. Um, let me go pull up some of their results. Um, but there was a little bit of concern o- around Anna Hall at the in the first half of the day, right? Like, uh, she had s- okay, her ankle all, going over the... I was a little the... concerned when I watched her get out for the 100 hurdles because really? she she got out slow. Hmm. She got out so slow that I was like, maybe it was the nerves of being here, but I couldn't see her being nervous because she she's been at high starter, levels. starter, though, in general. I mean, this start was... It, it wasn't great at all for... Darnell for Hughes-esque Anna. or what? That was or strange. Joe Fonbele. <laughs> that was very strange. A six athlete Joe Fonbele. <laughs> it wasn't her best start, but then thankfully she was able to to run. Talia is really good at hurdles as well, so she mm-hmm. had someone also pushing her throughout the hurdles. Um, yeah, I'm looking at the res- at the point total right now. Anna Hall out in front, three th- three thousand nine hundred ninety eight. But right behind her is KJT three thousand nine hundred five. But then we got USA three four. Charlie Hawkins, and then Talia Brooks. Um, so we might have a little 
fit to celebrate tomorrow. I mean, I think all three girls, if I'm not mistaken, PB'd in the, the shot they had today. They mm. did. I they were warming that. up the, the ring oh, for Ryan yeah, Krauser. Absolutely. Oh, so we can all, you Maybe know. Maybe I need to do that again. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So then final sprint event of the day, the men's hundred first round. Like in this one, we had a couple of surprises, but I think the biggest thing was we were just learning the state of, you know, who's yeah. fit. We're seeing everyone. Yes. And now finally – you're not tired. You're not racing through anything. We're running. So who are we buying? Who are we selling? Who are we pushing? Like odds. Whose odds change today? I could pull up. The, in the meantime, like I can pull up the odds for the for the meet uh, coming into it, and then we can kind of play around with that. But, but do like, you feel better or worse or the same about Fred Curley? Um, I feel a little bit better. better uh, because I feel, better. I feel like when he, because like Oblique had a. a Amazing race. Boy, like, amazing. That man got the hell out. Yeah. What? Yeah. Fred, he had Fred Curly big ass neck to him. <laughs> get out, get that out too. That man PB. That man said, I'm going to put a number out there. Y'all was doing all this talking. Look at the number that I'm going to put out because he ran a 986. And I think that's what's so interesting about all of this. So, you know, all the Jamaicans that ate me alive in the World Athletics comments. Well, congratulations. Oblique Seville is one of your favorites to make this podium <laughs> however i do feel better about fred because me jasmine and t was talking about this last night it's just like we just have to see like what he's gonna do and i feel like he gave away like the last couple of meters which make like it's fine it makes sense like he's just trying to get into the the to the next round but i feel like if he would have actually ran and like actually tried to ob embarrass oblique then that would have been a very very different race all so. right so we're feeling better about fred we feel very good about oblique Mm -hmm. Let's move to the next. So in the odds, Fred was the favorite at plus 250. Explain the odds and how it works for if, some of the If you put up 100 bucks, then in this scenario, and Fred you get wins. 100 back and you get $250 more. So that's how the betting works. Okay. And then second best odds, Noah Lyles plus 450. Today he wins his heat, uh, closed super hard to to catch Fernandad Omanyala, who looked over to his right, and uh, <laughs> that may have cost him the race. He said that he did not regret um, looking, looking next over. to him. Because he was like, it's a man, it's a, it's a championship. It's a prelim. It's like, a prelim. Woo. Survive in advance. So, Noah, we bought, did we like what we saw out of Noah today? Do we feel I any better or is the same? We already knew he could close hard. Somewhere between the same and just a tiny bit better because, like, even though it worked – like, this work for the first round, like, he just still has to get that first half of the race together. That's why I'm a little, I'm, I think I got to disagree on it. I'm saying, okay. but a little more on the negative because he can't, he can't afford to have a start like that if he wants to come out with a medal. He cannot. He, I, you know, Noah is great guy. <laughs> he's in, he's in, a, he's going to win an Emmy for this documentary that he's got on Peacock, but in a way, kind of dodged the question when I did ask, like, what would you grade today's start? He's like, oh, I, I don't even remember it. Like, I didn't I didn't see it yet or anything like that. And it's like, because it wasn't that great. <laughs> and, like, I, you just can't say that in that moment. So I think I'm with you, Jasmine, that I think, like, he's got the, – his margin for error is so small to try and come away with the medal here. Very different from a 200. That's such a cute picture. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, Adorable. did you ask Omanyala what he, he said? said? He don't even remember. Oh, he didn't remember. I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Then after that, uh, next best odds are Isama Singa. We're not going to touch that. That's a very unfortunate situation. <laughs> then next after that, uh, let's see. Let Tobogo plus five fifty odds, <laughs> and he, you know, surviving advance. I I'm neutral on this one. I'm, I'm, I'm neutral. I. It was prelims. Not for me when it when it comes to him. It was a prelim. He was he was stopping for literally everyone in the mix zone and like took took his time and like I was gonna let him He's go and then he just like stands in front of me and is like staring at me and I'm like I'm Chris. like, all right, I'll talk to you. <laughs> I do have one thing that I'm very curious about. And so, you know, I talked about the race and then I said to him, Weren't you supposed to go <laughs> to the University of Oregon this year? And then uh, he was like yeah, about that. And finally, 
addressed what <laughs> happened. So in summary, he doesn't know what happened either. What? He said, you know, I got my grades, which I'm kind of confused if he meant that like they were not that not good or good. But then he was like, and then I didn't hear back from the University of Oregon. Like never heard anything after like, that. do you mean like he applied to the school with no his i think he, i think like there was they, uh, the university of Oregon made a graphic announcing that he was going They're to the school recruiting him. and I so mean, like yeah, he was like committed is is very but anyway things. and then after that like he said uh he i said well it all worked out for you like it looks <laughs> like you went the professional route he's like i think i went the professional route and i was like what does that mean and so i I'm so confused, but yeah. you know what? Love the kid. And <laughs> I think that, uh, you know, the other fun part was I asked him, so it's like, you're running everything from the 100, 200, 300, 400. What's your best event? And he goes, I don't know. <laughs> so, <laughs> which no, like you got a he's just a soul that's so, on vibes. So you when know what? Look, he's, 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 that's the best way to describe yeah, it. This kid is time. running on vibes. <laughs> he heard the vibes were off at Oregon. He's like, oh. he's <laughs> like, like no. No. I do not want to be at Oregon. Uh, I don't know about that one. All right. He's um, like, can we talk about? He's like, I have to eat at McMinimins all the time. What? Can we talk about Heat Five and all of the false, not even false starts, the runbacks? Like that was. Absolutely insane to me. We were in the caverns of the uh, mix zone. So, like, we were just watching. It's like, is this TV bugging out and, like, just repeating the same clip over and over again? But, like, what, so what, what happened? What was going on is, again, the Hungarian crowd is so amazing. Oh, but they're a little too loud. Cheering. So, they were a little loud. And before they were starting... They started to clap for one of their triple jumpers. <laughs> and the triple jumper was trying to tell them to stop. He didn't even want to clap. And then they put him in the blocks, and then they got quiet, but then they started clapping again when he was about to jump again, and then it just kept kind of happening, and then they had a false start. I just, I don't understand how Favor Falls started so badly. I'm not Probably sure if he jitters. heard something, but I mean, it was such a, it was a crazy false start. It, you can't even try to to protest that one. And then they ran really fast. And then they ran the fast race. Fred. Also, they called one of them back that they gave a green card. I mean, I was recording them off my phone so I could go back and watch the races over. And I was just like, why did they call this back? Nobody falls started. Nobody mm. moved. That was insane. But the mental preparation in that as well is shout out to them because that's insane. So one is a lot. Oblique Seville was Plus four thousand odds. A hell of a bet. <laughs> we gotta check on what that is right now. Yeah, Jamaica's uh, about to go. Uh, Marcel Jacobs sneaks in. <laughs> oh, he got I in. Oh yeah. Okay, I, I he's through. Better about really? Him. Just a little bit. Not that he's gonna win, but oh, I mean, I didn't sell. even think that he was gonna. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't think he was gonna make it out of prelims. If I'm being honest. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he did say in the mix zone because I didn't. I'm not gonna lie. I didn't know. You like, didn't know if you made through. I didn't know because. It was it was so much going on with yeah. like everything like shifting. So I was like, I don't think that he made it through. And so I was like, so what's your comeback for next year? And he didn't know <laughs> what I was talking about. He was like, huh? <laughs> but I don't think he understood because like, I was speaking like in slang. And he's like, and so he got his translator, and the translator didn't know what I was talking about. And then T had to translate to the translator what I was trying to say. And he was like, oh, next year, I got you. You will only know one name, Marcel Jacobs. And then he walked off. I think we're getting him on our show uh, now. <laughs> well, I don't know, but like, I think the funniest thing to me is that you know he did he speak English to you? Yeah, he spoke English. But it's like he prefers. Uh, I get that he prefers to speak Italian, but it's like the dude was born in Texas. That's why I was like, <laughs> wait, because when when he was like, well, you know, like, da -da -da, and I was like. Did he live in Texas? Like, how do you not know what a, like, a comeback is? Like, what am I tweaking? And I was like, I don't even know. You're like, Whataburger. I and mean, he's like, sometimes I'm when you leave, <laughs> I've heard, like, they forget English. I have one friend who left, and she don't really speak English no more. I don't just think that friend doesn't want to talk to you anymore. I yeah, <laughs> I think that could be it, too. Said, no, he rated my fit in 11 today, so that's my bestie now. I was, my trying, now. I was right. trying to help him out. <laughs> <laughs> Jason's gone. He's like, no English. He's like, no English. What is she talking about? 
out. Please let me know. All right, we got to keep going through. Zarnell Hughes, buy, sell, push. Oh, my goodness. Okay, that he, he cannot start like that ever again. Or I'm going to have to come down on the track and snatch him up myself and say, hey. But that ending, I'd buy. They're going to oh, let yeah. him do a running start. <laughs> Literally, I, but yeah, I still feel really Bye. great about him. Probably the same um, because. Bye. I'd buy. Really? You're well, at we're a low just price. talking about how Noah can't start poorly, and how, if he wants to. But and now Zarnell, Zarnell doesn't necessarily have a history of bad, start. bad starts. Mm -hmm. Noah has a history of not ha as of lately, I should say. Okay, he hasn't been starting very well. You know, I saw Noah tweeted out a clip of like him at the track saying like, "Oh, it's go time" or whatever it was. It was like the clip of him practicing the start of the hundred to hype you know fans up. He's it's great at marketing and like pushing the sport out to people, and then like there's a couple of people like quote tweeted it. It's like this start ain't it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't look at the quote yeah, you always gotta look at the quote tweets. That's where like some of the really funny stuff is at. And like I was like, man, these people are savage. It's like it's it's crazy, but um, yeah. Go All right, so Cravon Charleston, U.S. Champ. out. We had, we had heard rumors that there were some injuries going on. Quite clearly, I feel like had been he dealing just with something. Was not that he's not sharp. I think it might have just been the coming overseas part. Has he had it's any true. actual experience? He did. Yeah, he, he raced he once. No, yeah. he's, he's overseas. raced overseas before. I, I just think he got hurt in camp. It was a bit more serious than yeah. he may have thought. Um, yeah, it's unfortunate. Great story to get all the yes. way up until this point. But now uh, at this point, do you put him on the relay? No. Like you no, can't. I, I mean, no. when you no. see him limping, like even like if he, he was, tries to no. get healthy the next. Oh, you he know. was limping. I mean, you guys yeah. were down in the mix zone, so yeah. yeah. He didn't stop to talk. He was visibly upset, but also and visibly limping. Um, yeah. So, I don't think you take the chances with the U.S. Yeah, history no, of the men's four off. by one. You need the best team possible. Yeah. All right, and then final Christian Coleman, or we buy sell push. Yeah. I to, I'm the same because I was already <laughs> 10 toes down behind double C's. That's all I'm going to say. Um, that man. That's not all you're going to say. You can't say that's all I'm going to say and then go and into like a whole big thing. That's all not all how right, it works. Shut up. I'm going to shut up. I got you. <laughs> Carry on. Go ahead. Please you can retract that statement and go. Retracting the statement. Big I'm going to say more. C's all day long because I told y'all we've seen a man in practice. Well, he's going to leave me now, but it's okay. But I've seen a man in practice. That start today was vicious. I know he got caught at the end. However, I it's think it was kind of the same thing as like low. Fred. He Let me just down. see what where I'm at, and then if somebody come get me, they come get me. If not, then you know whatever. But that start, shh, that's what no one need. I if think you put he's Noah back. and Christian as the same person, oh. Christian said he came to get his lick back. He was Man, like, nah, y'all y'all seen that I've had these trials and tribulations. I haven't been myself, but that man's back. That start was vicious. Man, I thought he, the track was going to blow up. It was a little scary. So I can't remember who said on Twitter, um, but someone was saying, like, if you're Christian in the last 10 meters – is the weakest part of your game that you shouldn't let up in this situation. Like, you should practice running through the line. Mm. Any validity to that? I forgot who it was. It's someone good. It was, like, Bianca or someone. No, like, I, I can agree with that statement. I can definitely agree with that statement. But I think that in a prelim, it's, like, he, he knows what he's doing. He can't do that, obviously, in the final. But also, I can get Bianca because you should just practice and run through the line. Yeah, like get that. I don't know. The but muscle memory, I think. Going, what, yeah. um, I mean, my coach has always told me pretend like you're running 120 meters and not 100. So run mm -hmm. through the line. And that's probably something he should do too, especially with the amount of talent that's surrounding him and knowing that he has the potential to come out with a gold medal. That's something that I would do, especially in the semifinal. All right, so let's do picks. Oh, man, it was just so crazy because, like, Last year, the semifinal was really when the fireworks came out. And that's when Fred dropped, what was it, like 9-7? Nine, 9-7 seven. Seven something. Yeah. So I think we'll see something similar to that tomorrow. I am going with... Mm, I'm, I'm sticking with Fred. Fred for the win. The gold Asics shoes. Are we, oh, those are Big fire. fan. You need them for the media 800, yeah. as we said. Um, those are fire. I like those. I just saw the picture that you guys yeah. had posted, and I was like... Oh, because I was kind of far. I couldn't really see his spikes up close. So I'm going 
Fred Curley, gold. Ah, I'm going. Omanyala, silver. I don't even see the... Oh, here he is. Akane Simbine, bronze. All right. Caitlin, you're throwing all your weight behind Christian. I heard ten toes behind him. Or oh, something. Christian! Yeah. I'm going. Uh, Fred <laughs> Curley, gold. Christian Coleman, silver. And then uh, Omanyala, bronze. Oh, I got to pick. Why can't everybody just get first place? Yeah. No, you got to pick. Down. Because they all so good. It just depend. It just depend on who messed up it tomorrow. Like. I don't know. Well, apparently, just like the high jump, they found a rule and everyone could share the medal. Yeah. <laughs> but mm. but men's hundred, these guys would never share. You know Should what? we hand out participation you know awards Rubens. instead? I'm I'm gonna say something that's going. Do it. Make Fred Curly, never speak to me again. Then don't say it. we need him on our show. Oh, <laughs> I would just gonna say he might. Get Anyways, yeah, um, um, okay. So I have he to needs that motive. Yeah, so I have mean. to pick him as gold. No, you no, no, no. But then. You think Christian's gonna win? It seems okay. Yeah. Back that up. Just, just say. Or is it Noah? Ten toes down. Say it. Just say, say it. it. I was going to say. And then we're firing you. Actually, no, <laughs> if you're wrong. In no particular <laughs> order. <laughs> Christian Zarnell and Ferdinand. Okay, I like that. <laughs> and you said Fred fourth. Yes. You didn't say it, but I put. Yes. Yeah, okay. I feel like I was cross-examining you there. Go. <laughs> You know, I can't ever bet against Fred. So I'm going to say Fred, Christian Coleman, because he looked too good in that start. And I just oblique. I'm going I'm to say. Okay, oblique. I like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, you guys know me. I'm a patriot. And that's yeah. why I'm going to say sweep. U.S. Sweep. 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 Fred <laughs> in the A6 gold shoes. <laughs> Noah, I think. Silver. Comes through with the silver, and then I'll take Christian third. Uh, I, but Wait. I will say that I was not thinking about oblique at all. And Don't say that the Jamaicans I wasn't, are going to come get I you. I wasn't and there. now I'm like, holy. The like, Jamaicans are going to come get he you. He looks so any good. If American wins, After I think it's oblique. After today, that was such a smooth race. It's yeah. hard to not have him in metal contingent. So. But you also have to, Jasmine, you always talk about uh, I'm revising how you look through the rounds. Because <laughs> even if you run, like, He didn't it's look a, like he was pressing, though. That's the difference. He didn't look like he was trying too hard to run that fast. And when that happens. We're getting crap in the comment section on YouTube for being like, the, you guys are talking so biased. Yeah, I mean, like, we're Americans, we're patriotic, and also, like... Okay, then why, why, why do we need to pick Oblique? Why can't you pick him? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody is stopping you from picking Oblique, okay? Or Akani, or whoever you want to pick. If you if, t Tell us who you picking in the comments. <laughs> since since, since y'all so mad about it, tell us who you want. No, I, I truthfully do... Th I was saying this about Fred. Yeah, yeah no, we did thank sweep you. last year. No, but I, that's I why we have that. reason to. <laughs> if Fred leans better in London versus in Bean, like then there's no question marks or anything, and Fred's like the heavy favorite coming in. I think still just like he was earlier in the season, and I think today he just jogged across the line. He, he definitely just let that one go. I don't see any reason why we should doubt. Trust Fred me, right I now. am not patriotic. Last last year, <laughs> I was getting yelled at for picking Jamaica, and then U.S. won. So come you, on, guys. Exactly, you got to hold Jamaican right here. So, I think we need to find a piece of cardboard and a big and some markers. I just want, if Fred wins, this is the photo I want. I want one of you who is sitting in the stands tomorrow. Just hold up a. Big sign that says "We buy and land," and oh. like <laughs> just in the stands, yeah. and he he will point to it or like. That's a good idea. We buy and land. Yeah, we buy and land, but only raise it if he wins. Absolutely, I think that's the move tomorrow. If you don't, if he doesn't win, it's just we're buying some land, <laughs> <laughs> little <laughs> land, <laughs> a little bit of land. Your, that is Jasmine's job tomorrow. <laughs> All right, so to close this out, uh, we just need one more picks. Uh, come over here, Sprint Lad. Uh, David McCarthy, who says now he's a big sprints guy. So who hey. is your who is your podium for Tomorrow. the men's 100 meters? I must say, actually, I was kind of <laughs> leaning similar to what Kyle was doing, saying <laughs> the American sweep. Um, but um, Cole uh, Coleman, 
Coleman. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I thought his start looked. I thought he looked very light in his feet today. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Okay. No, um, I think um, let's uh, let's. I'll, 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 I'll give I'll give here. I'll give uh, Noel Isles a second chance. <laughs> you know, he didn't look that impressive today. Uh, you know, and, and I, th- I, I thought he, uh, you know, I thought he would be a bit more. But maybe I think uh, he, he'll, he'll get his game up. Um, I, d- I didn't think Fred Curley looked unbelievable today. But he was easing up. Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, too, he was held out there a really long time. So, like, that's t- to be fair. Um, who else do we have here? You're on the oh, Marcel Jacobs train or no? Uh, Marcel Jacobs. Yeah, but actually, I thought uh, uh, O'Malley. Is it uh, oblique Seville? No, the Bernadette Ken- Omanyal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna go. John, I'm gonna give it to Kenya first. Whoa! Wow. Whoa. He said he was going to win in Atlanta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I'm giving. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, giving, giving, yeah, I'm Kenya gonna do the that. Gold medal yeah, because the how hundred. how ridiculous would it be if I came through and my prediction was right? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be sick. I would love that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, no, here, I'm going to go O'Malley, right? And then I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to go Curly Lyles. Okay. Nice. There we go. Kenya, oh, there. Yeah, you drop the mic and walk there? off. Yeah. Boom. I'm not even mad at those guys. Yeah, because that's still close to distance, isn't it, right? Yeah. Oh, you just pick Kenny. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, oh, distance. <laughs> <laughs> distance. <laughs> so... <laughs> All right, that does it for day one of the World Athletics Championships here in Budapest. Uh, Thanks for tuning in. Thanks to ASICS for supporting all of our coverage of the World Championships. We've got a ton of interviews on the CS Mag YouTube channel. We are going to be doing our daily show. So if you're on the East Coast, tune in at around 8.30, 9 a.m. We'll be live. We're assembling a great group of uh, guests tomorrow. We've got David Rudisha coming on the show it's a big deal and then yeah expect these podcasts daily and be sure to follow along on sidiousmag.com sidiousmag on instagram x threads whatever wherever social media platform you're at and i mean i love track and field you love track and field this is a good day one anyway Uh, a lot more to come how many live shows did you say we were doing we're doing a total of 20 live shows this is number two because we're doing uh, the daily show in the afternoon, the recap show, and then two marathon watch-alongs. You're going to see a lot of us, but we do it for the love of the game. Yeah, fact. Well, it's sick being, in the, nerds. sick being in the live studio with you guys. Been watching on YouTube for a while now, so. We're real people. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>